my next guest on the show is sitting out here on the green room, uh, Rich Eisen show green room couch. JJ Reddick, you there, JJ? I'm there. Yeah. Oh, say hi to Coach. Oh, man. Coach, what's oh, up, man? I cannot hey, believe man, Rich. Rich set you up so perfectly to name drop me <laughs> of all the people that contacted you yesterday. <laughs> Who is Seth Myers and Coach K? Come on, man. <laughs> I texted true. you. Give me some credit That's here. True. I heard, guys, I heard from J.J. Reddick. He was one of the first people to do that. <laughs> it's too late. It's too late. I see where I stand so, now. <laughs> you guys got me. You guys got me. I, you know, I'm proud of me. You know, I had, I had a brain fart there. But uh, it's awesome to have J.J. on. J.J., I could brag about him all day. He's, he's like a little brother to me, and I'm so proud of everything that he's accomplished. And, uh, I never tell this to him often to his face, but watching his journey and I, he became the player that I always wanted to be. So it was fun to be there on the bench watching him for four years and, and watching him become the pro he's been. And you guys better watch out, man, with his podcast now. He's he's taking the uh, he's taking the journey. He's taking the media by storm now. So he's doing it all. I'm so proud of him. All right, love you, CC. Good luck tomorrow, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, All right. Now, but as you know, Coach, I would be concerned about him taking my job, but I have a degree from the Medill School of Journalism <laughs> at Northwestern, so I've got that to fall back on. <laughs> well, you're you're in good shape. I don't worry about you. Maybe it's some of the other guys. I, I uh, yeah. JJ's a, JJ's a good one. So he's uh, once he's done playing. I think he might be uh, might be a fixture in your guys' world. Part of the paparazzi. Hey, congrats again on being 1-0 and and getting that yeah. first one and getting it done, and good luck against Gonzaga. Thank you guys very much. A pleasure to be on the show. Thanks. You got it. That's Chris Collins of Northwestern. You just heard that's J.J. Reddick over there. Thanks for coming in, J.J. You were in Denver last night, for crying out loud. Thanks for coming in here today. Yeah. Uh, J.J. Reddick, when we come back here live on the Rich Eisen Show. All right, J.J. Reddick is here uh, with Michigan now down to a minute to go against Oklahoma State, um, and now they're up by uh, seven. Would you mind – you host a podcast. Would you mind if we switched here so I can watch and you you host the rest of this segment? Would you are mind? You, are you serious? Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> this is amazing. We only have about 90 seconds, J.J., so not too much time to fill. Go ahead. Just no, do it in a second. Yeah. Uh, in terms of your emotions right now, watching your <laughs> – uh, your school play. You had a great day yesterday. Yeah, JJ. You're about to be 2-0. and So far, uh, right now, with Northwestern and Michigan, uh, yeah, but right now, um, I soiled myself <laughs> about a minute ago watching uh, this game. <laughs> but thanks for asking. When you fill out a bracket, who do you pick? Mm. Well, I go for the best team available, JJ. Um, but if you don't mind, would you mind talking to them? Because I can't focus on what I need to yeah. focus on right now. Well, right now it's a commercial, Rich, so oh, you, gosh. you can focus. Okay, great. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're good. It's the JJ Reddick Show, by the way, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back now. JJ, what was it like when the Maryland fans were chanting F you, JJ? Do you hear that when you're playing? It's hard to miss 20,000 people <laughs> <laughs> chanting F you, yeah. JJ. Yeah. Do you hear that when but you're if you, playing? But if you actually, if you I watch know, the clip, like, I think the clip is still out. available yeah. on YouTube. Point game. And as I'm like, well, doing you my free throw like, routine, you used to taunt everyone there's a good too. little smirk. Yeah. Welcome back to the Rich Eisen Show. He is here on behalf of the Dove Men's uh, Plus Care, Real Winners Care campaign. Uh, he is the Los Angeles Clippers guard, and he is a longtime Dookie. I guess you're once a Dookie, you're always a Dookie. Great to have J.J. Reddick in the flesh here in the Rich Eisen Show studio. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Thanks for having me on. How calm do you think I am right now with Michigan up five, inbounding the ball with 33 seconds to go, and dangerously close to not winning this game? How do you, you think I'm handling jittery. You seem jittery. Well, it could be the coffee from my Axe Capital <laughs> mug that you pointed out. I noticed out. that when I was back in the green room. I thought to myself, does he have a, a mug from the show Billions? I do. Yeah, I need to get that. Do you want, I can, foot, I can hook I need you. To get that. Do you like Billions? It's a great show. Isn't that I'm great? all caught up. I have a, see, I have two young kids. Okay. So it's really hard How old for are your me. kids? Two and a half and a half. Get out of here. Yeah. Okay. That's right. You told me back there. <laughs> yeah. So two and a half and six months old. Right. How do you play in the NBA? I don't know. I don't know. My six month old gets up at like 530 every morning. And uh, so my wife and I have this like agreement, like if it's the night before a game, yes, I get to sleep in sleeping in being like when my other son gets up at 630. Seven. Right. Yeah, yeah. Seven. <laughs> right. Uh, but if it's if it's we don't have a game, then it's my responsibility to get up with the six month old. 
So as you can imagine, you get home from, let's say, Denver at 3 a.m. Like, say, I got, just recent, yeah. fresh from the headlines. Exactly. Okay. And, uh, and then, yeah, you got to be up with a six-month-old a couple hours later. Uh-huh. And nice. so, But anyways, it's very hard for me to, to sort of stay up to date with TV shows. So everything is watched on the road. Well, I was about to say, you're, yeah. you're in the hotel room. Yeah, maybe you're streaming. Yeah. So you're I'm streaming all, I about... just started The Night Manager, which I heard is good. It is. It... Yeah. I was a little disappointed in it. Okay. I certainly didn't think that, you know, um, the night manager himself should have won the Golden Globe okay. over, yeah. you know, uh, everybody else. Did you watch The Night Of? I did. I thought okay. that was great. Yeah, because I just finished that. Now I'm doing The Night Manager. I thought The Night Of was the unofficial sequel to True Detective. Boom. Did you ever see True Detective? I only watched season one. Correct. And, and, be, and to be honest with you, other than Mad Men, I think season four, season one of True Detective is my favorite season of television ever. Did you understand it, though? Even though I was, I, I know I'm talking to a, a guy from Duke, yeah, yeah. so you got a head on your shoulders here, and yeah. I loved it, too. Yeah. But I would watch it two or three times, and I'm like, what the I feel hell like, are I they saying? I feel like to really understand it, you need to do, do like a deep dive on sort of the culture in the bayou. To mm -hmm. really fully understand it. So what? what so you're watching Billions right now when you're on the road. Yeah, with I'm the caught Los up. Angeles so I'm, I'm watching the current season. And yeah. all that said, I will get you. Um, yeah. I will fix you up with this mug. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. JJ Reddick here on the Rich Eisen Show. What does this time of year conjure up for you? This time of year it with conjures Mark up great memories. It's it's part of the reason that I that I partnered with Dove Men Plus Care for this Real Strength Manifesto. Mm -hmm. um, because this time of year is really all about like the game itself and how we're all sort of part of the game. And uh, my greatest memories uh, in college are, you know, playing in front of the Cameron Crazies or playing in the NCAA tournament. And as, as CC, as Coach Collins mentioned earlier, um, you know, in, in seeing a sort of a sea of purple in the arena, like I can just remember like looking and seeing half the stadium full with Duke blue and the other half full with, with Michigan State Green, mm -hmm. and uh, and you just see that passion and care that that fans and alumni have uh, this time of year, and it's it's just an awesome thing. Yeah, and we'll get to the uh, Real Strength Manifesto in a second. Uh, what what is Coach K like oh. when the tournament hits? Is it different? Is he is he yeah? Does he ratchet it up a notch? What is it What is it like? What are what are the current Duke Blue Devils thinking about before they take the court tonight? So the whole season is in preparation for the tournament. And that's how he breaks it down. So I'll give you a couple examples. Um, he purposely schedules non-conference games in neutral sites like Madison Square Garden um, or the United Center in Chicago, because those are the type of arenas that you're gonna play in in the NCAA tournament. So he wants the guys to get that experience. Um, the other thing he'll do is like if, if during the ACC schedule, they have like a Thursday game and a Saturday game, he'll break that down like the NCAA tournament where it's, you know, you're playing on a, on a Thursday or in this case, you're playing on a Friday against the 15 seed and you, you, you got to, you know, win on Sunday to advance the next round. So everything's sort of broken down into these two game segments. Mm -hmm. And he'll do that during the regular during season the regular to get season. you ready for that to get you rhythm. Ready. So, yeah, exactly. So when you get to the tournament, it's not about ratcheting it up because you've, you've spent the entire season sort of preparing for the NCAA tournament. Right. And so did you ever reach out to Grayson Allen during his issues? Did you ever text him, reach out to him or coach? What issues? Kim? What? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, no, well you've, I, you, you've played against the Warriors, so yeah. you've seen something similar to uh, appendage control yeah. issues. Yeah. Uh, A-C-I, as, as it's known <laughs> uh, in the medical community. Um, um, no, I, I've, I've talked with Grayson um, a little bit over the last two years. Uh, I spent a couple weeks at Duke uh, in the fall of 2015. Uh, my brother got married one week and my sister got married the very next weekend. So mm -hmm. I was there and got to spend some time with him. And then last April when he was, you know, trying to figure out if he was gonna go back to school or not, um, we talked on the phone for, for about 30 minutes, just about, you know, my experiences and whatnot. Um, but I didn't, I didn't talk to him this year. Um, you know, at all. I, no, I didn't. I, I saw him, I was at the Duke UNC game at Duke in Cameron in early February. I spent a couple minutes with him after the game, but more as a congratulatory thing because he had just played his ass off and hit seven threes and scored 25 points. He was for about 10 days um, in December into January, public enemy number one. Yeah. On yeah. Twitter. Yeah. And, and, and radio shows. Sure. And simulcasts like yeah. these. Yeah. 
Um, would it would it, would it have happened though if if he had been doing that at Florida, or at Texas, or at Kansas? Would would that's what I said. Would now the reason why he's responding is he feels that if an, any other quarterback who didn't play for the Patriots had something going on with the footballs, that wouldn't have happened either. Yeah. That there's a Patriot yeah. bias in the NFL, and you are saying that there's a similar Duke bias. Is that what, I, is that what I'm I mean, reading? Is that what I'm picking of, up can, what you're putting down, of, JJ? I can think of one of our rivals that has had a pretty serious academic scandal <laughs> that was basically covered for like a week. Yep. And nobody talks about that. But people want to like perpetuate this myth of like this Duke villain. Wait, and it's been going you? on for almost 30 years now. I don't know why. You tell me. What do you think it is? Well, uh, I think I, I always point the finger in Leitner's direction, <laughs> you know. Let's all blame Christian. <laughs> and Wojciechowski yeah. and, you I know. I was probably guilty a little bit. You, yeah. you know, you, um, there's a certain, you don't think there's a certain arrogance? You don't? But I think, I, I think that's part of the, the perception, though, because Duke is a private, a small private school. There's like this elitism, but like the basketball players are... You know, we're all working class guys. We all come from, you know, middle class, lower middle class families. Like, mm -hmm. you know, none of us could have gone to Duke without a jump shot. It's not, there's not like, to me, I, I don't, I don't feel like I, I like let off this aura of elitism. I shouldn't say that because I, I, I get accused all the time of uh, being a Michigan fan of, that we're arrogant. Yeah. That we wear it on our sleeves yeah. in a way that we're special and other people are not. Yeah. But I guess Duke is definitely, there's no doubt Duke is held to a, a different standard in many different ways. Yeah, I think JJ part of Redick. it too is like most people went to college, like a lot of people, well not most people, but a lot of people went to college, mm -hmm. a college. Mm -hmm. And so you're, you're an alumni or you're, you're part of an alumni network, I should say. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so you have, you have pride in that school. And so in, inevitably we're human beings. So what do we do? We compare. You know, we compare our academics. We worry about if, you know, Northwestern Michigan, you're worried about your school ranking mm -hmm. in the U.S. World News and Report. And uh, in sports, <laughs> you, you compare things based on, you know, championships and how many guys you get in the pros, how many guys you get in the NFL, how many guys get in the NBA. And, and so that's probably one of the reasons. I mean, we've won five national championships and we have, I think, first or second, the most NBA players uh, in the league. So it's, it's, it's inevitable that people are going to compare and then say, well, F those guys. <laughs> Fantastic. JJ Reddick here on the Rich Eyes. If I'm wrong, tell me. Well, if I'm wrong, tell no, me. No, you are you are not. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. That that but there is a certain level of of that we are more special than you. There I've never is heard that. a Duke person say that. I don't feel like we're you don't more have special to than say anyone. It. I don't you, feel that way. I, like the, the 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 resume speaks for itself. So the resume is what it is. I, I'm not gonna like, I'm not gonna downplay the fact that we that Coach K has won five national championships. That's pretty awesome. That's the second time you've mentioned that. We in should the last no, no, we should celebrate that. No, and, and, and just like I'm not a Patriots fan. In fact, they kind of loathe me. Like I, I you know I they, I don't like them at all. You know, and and I'll be honest, Tom Brady. I respect him as an athlete. He kind of annoys me. But you know what? I can respect the heck out of what they've been able to accomplish and what they've been able to do. Why does Brady annoy you? Because he's a Michigan guy? Is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> no, is that because he is? doesn't eat nightshades and he's never tried a strawberry. <laughs> I think that's weird. That is definitely weird. I love Tom Brady, but that's really weird. Thank you. Let's take a break. Again, we'll talk about uh, the Dove Men Plus Care Real Strength Manifesto. And I do want to talk about the Clippers season sure. as well as the, the NBA season that is unfolding right here in Los Angeles. Back with J.J. Redick in 60 seconds here on The Rich Eisen Show. Thank you, Mike Del Tufo. I really appreciate the Michigan fight song as Michigan survives Oklahoma State moments ago by one point. Oklahoma State tossed in a three, meaningless three that I think uh, was not meaningless for some. Am I correct when I assume that? Yeah, Brett, Brett Musburger is uh, pretty happy. Correct. Okay. We're good. Correct. JJ Reddick here in the Rich Eisen Show studio. All right, let, let us talk about this Dove Men Plus Care uh, campaign. What is the Real Strength Manifesto? Uh, the Real Strength Manifesto is, um, is basically 
a, a unifying manifesto about what it means to be a fan, what it means to be a part of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, and it really hit home with me, given my experiences at Duke, um, both positive and negative. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a celebration of sort of, you know, what fans mean to our game, especially uh, this time of year during March Madness. And people can... Uh, people can go to the website, dovemencare.com slash NCAA. Uh, I would encourage everyone to, to read the manifesto. You can also sign the manifesto. There's yes. been a lot of supporters. Okay. Uh, myself, Alonzo Mourning, Ray Allen, Jim Calhoun. A lot of people in the Paul game of Pierce. basketball. Paul, Paul Pierce. Pierce. Yeah. What's it like being a teammate of Paul Pierce at this point? At this it, point? It, it, yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, so, it's JJ? Like, no, it's it would be amazing to be, you know, have been on those Boston teams, you know, with KG and, and Ray and, and Rondo and, mm -hmm. and Paul, um, you know, you get a I think you get a different perspective um, of guys when they're in their prime uh, versus when, you know, they're they're on the last leg of their career. And this is sort of his his farewell tour or whatever. Um, but he's been great. I mean, he's great in our locker room. He's he's, he's great on the bus. He's great on planes. Um, but you know, like playing with them, like the, the Paul Pierce that I play with mm -hmm. is, is not the hall of famer, Paul Pierce. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Of course it does. Yeah, I mean, it's just a different part of his career I, right I, now. I, there, there was a part of me and I love my time in Orlando, but there was a part of me that like, when I saw what Boston was doing, I was like, oh man, that'd be a great to be a part of that. And he was a big reason why he was, you know, one of the toughest guys I've ever played against. JJ Redick here in the Rich Eisen show studio. And now, uh, the the Clippers, uh, currently the five seed, you've got Oklahoma City right there, larger in your rearview mirror right now. Um, the conversation we're having in the paparazzi, JJ, is that if something significant doesn't happen in the playoffs for the Clippers this year, that this team's going to get broken up. Is that a sense that you feel in the locker room, that you guys feel as you go about your business for Doc on a daily in basis? In a sense, yes, because I think there's always been sort of this this – timeline whether it's artificial or not of of this summer um because of chris and blake being free agents um you know i'm also a free agent um probably not as much of an impact as those two guys but uh you know this team when it was put together and, and doc came aboard um you know the discussion was all about championships and so ultimately we're sort of judged upon or judged by what we do in the playoffs and um so i think a lot of what management and what ownership decides to do going forward um, will be based on what we do in the playoffs. I mean, Steve's going to have some decisions to make. Mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of tax implications, if he decides to bring guys back. Steve Ballmer, you're talking about yes, when you say guy, Steve. Steve. He, he, he's your guy. <laughs> First time I ever met him, I called him Mr. Ballmer. And he, he immediately say? shot that down mm -hmm. and said, you only refer to me as Steve. So that's... Steve Ballmer. Okay, yeah. and uh, is he as crazy as it seems? Crazy? To me? No, no, he's as passionate as, passionate. as it seems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he. You had him on your podcast. I had him right? on my podcast. What is it he like was interviewing one of my the boss? I had on the podcast that you you yeah. have on the vertical. Yes, correct. I have a podcast uh, on the vertical, which is is part of the Yahoo Network. But it's um, very good, by the way. You're good at it, JJ. Thank you. I, oh, I appreciate that. You're welcome. <laughs> thank yeah, you. you got it. I, that means a lot coming from you. I thank really you. appreciate that. But uh, he was one of my favorite guests. It's 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 rare, I think, that you get a chance to have one, like an hour of one-on-one -on -one time with your employer. Yes. And uh, and when your employer is, is worth about $30 billion mm -hmm. uh, and owns the team, like it's just, it was such a unique opportunity for me. And um, I got a chance to sort of pick his brain about, you know, basketball stuff, but also sort of business stuff, which mm -hmm. is something that I'm interested in. And uh, he's just he's just a fascinating person to me. Yeah, and he he can dunk a basketball when he's getting up there uh, with a that help was one of the a trampoline. scariest moments I've ever had. By the way, why? Um, she thought he was not gonna. Well, I, I I all I could think about was what his life insurance policy looked like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's massive. It's got to be. Well, I mean, if there was something to break his fall right there, uh, including Chuck the Condor, is there <laughs> is there a way we can make that stop Chuck the Condor? I'm putting you on the spot in a way I understand. Yeah. I'm, I'm just not, I don't, I don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't get it. Yeah. I don't understand it. I don't it. think a lot of people get it. Well, I mean, the condor isn't even the state bird of California. Chuck is for the Chuck Taylors that nobody's really wearing. I believe there was um, a, a large, uh, at one point, population, or maybe the largest population of, of condors mm -hmm. <laughs> was around downtown Los Angeles at oh. one point, or maybe it is now. Okay. Uh, don't quote me on that. Um, the, but I think that was part of the reason. Okay. Chuck has grown on me, though. He, he's, he's grown on well, me. When been... he first was introduced, I was like, this is this is an awful cartoon. Who mm -hmm. drew that? Mm -hmm. But 
he's he's grown on me. Well, I mean, if you know you're a pop culture guy, you know the line from the Silence and the Lambs: "You covet what you see every day." And you, you've been, you've been around Chuck a lot more than yeah, I have been right. around. But yeah. see, I just I'm just also not a mascot guy to begin yeah. with. You know, I'm just I not think, a mascot. I think when a mascot person. makes sense, mm -hmm. it it can be like a good thing. Sure. You know, um, Chuck makes no sense. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> we're the Clippers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you could we could add a boat, yeah. right? It gets, that's what I'm saying, but it gets hard. So, mm -hmm. like, who says you have to have a mascot? Who says that? There's I'm, no I'm, mandate that there's says no, we have there's to have no, a mascot. There's no Wolverine mascot. I know there's a Blue Devil. Yeah, there's a Blue Devil. I know that. that that's, it's a like a Blue Devil is like a sort of a caricature. You know what I mean? And so it makes sense that we I have a Blue Devil. No, I, I don't take it as a caricature. I take it as a, a sign of arrogance. That's why I take it. <laughs> <laughs> I look at that Blue God. Devil. I'm like, look at that arrogant smug bastard with the big head. <laughs> You know what's really interesting to me? I've always I've always found this interesting, like with Duke with Duke people, like yeah, like we I, gen, generally speaking, like we don't really disparage like other schools or other schools. No, because you're Duke, bases. because we're all below you. No, but it's, it just seems like what's there's the like this inferiority complex that other schools have. Like, I just don't get it. But Rich, you say the same things it. about Michigan. I know. That people yeah, say yeah. About it's Duke, like a Mad Lib. You ridiculous. could just remove the proper name of Duke and put Michigan. It's in. ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, I know that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. I'm just having fun. Just we're making all sure proud you know. here. We're okay. all proud of where we where we're from and what we. Of course, JJ Redick here. A few more minutes here on the show. Do NBA players need extra rest? Do players need to be rested on the road in the manner that we are seeing this, that <sighs> a lot of fans are buying tickets to the game and yeah. star players are being rested? And we saw Warriors Spurs on a Saturday night that yeah. essentially. Yeah. And, and, and so walk me through this process. I think from a JJ. player's perspective, it's a good thing. Um, I, I mean, in terms of the studies they've done on recovery, uh, rest, sleep, uh, sort of the wear and tear of an 82 game season. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to prolong our careers. So I think it's a good thing. Um, the flip side of that, of course, is is the business side. Mm -hmm. And and I think we do have a responsibility uh, to put forth our best product. And so we also recognize that that fans are paying, you know, their hard earned money for tickets or, uh, you know, the ability to watch ESPN or Turner or NBA League Pass or or whatever they watch the games. And so there, there's a responsibility to put our best product forward. And, and when players rest, that's not our best product. It's it's an interesting sort of dichotomy. And it's it's also a conversation that we need to have, you know, players, coaches, management, uh, fans, league office, everybody sort of figure out a solution to it. Yeah, because they're, they're, they're ha obviously a, an NBA player. And, and I uh, apologize for putting you in that spot right there because – you're not going to sit here, even though the help might help you making, you know, as much money as an NBA player makes saying, you know, folks, you don't understand. We need our we need our rest mm -hmm. every now and then. And it yeah. does. It doesn't sound at yeah. all fan friendly whatsoever. Yeah. So what does the extra rest? How does that benefit? I think a, it's, an NBA player. I think it's more of just uh, take, looking at it from a long term perspective. And so we we have these wearables. I don't have the data in front of me. I can't give it to you, but we have right. these wearables. And so. Most teams now have hired. What sort do you mean of by a, that? A director. A wearable. What okay, do you mean I'll, by I'll that? You, but most teams have hired like a director of sports performance. I don't know the exact title for every team. I'd love but to. We have that. one of those. So a wearable would be like a monitoring device. So it's it's measuring your workload during mm -hmm. a practice. We're technically not allowed to wear them during games, although some guys sort of skirt the rules mm -hmm. with that. Um, and it it also measures your recovery. So you, I actually wear one at night. It's called a, a Whoop. And you wear it on your wrist, and it, it sort of measures your REM cycles and all these things. And so as you're traveling, I'll give you an example. For, for the, you know, two, two days ago, we played Wednesday in L.A. We have to go to Denver. We lose an hour. It's a two-hour flight. Yes. We got to the hotel at 4 a.m. We, we left Blake and DJ behind. So that gave those guys an opportunity to rest. We have 18 games in 30 days this month. Uh, so just looking at it from that perspective, the rest makes sense. Next year, we're going to start the regular season, I think, eight or ten days sooner the, mm -hmm. this can be a shorter preseason um i think next year there'll be less dnp rests okay uh, just because of the schedule i think the schedule is going to be a little bit better okay and and so when you hand in your whoop jj reddick are they I, able are they able to tell i don't have to hand it in what? with that the whoop is is for oh, my they, own oh i see so yeah. I, I was about to say if you hand it in then then they'll be able to say oh the baby got up at 5 30 this morning <laughs> they can be able to tell what your rem sleep they, is they don't want to look at my whoop data <laughs> trust me they say whoop there it is yeah. I, I, that's it I, okay everybody that's called a 
a bad, bad walk attempt. Off. Just, okay. That's mean, not a walk off. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah. I don't want this down. I love chatting with you, JJ. Yeah, well, you know we're just we are just down. We are just down. I live uh, like a mile from here. Oh, come so. on, it, just, it makes this sense. is a home game for you. It makes sense. This is a home game for you. Please come back anytime. And and you're, like I said, congrats on your pod, man. Thank you. So when, so when's your next one after the season, so I, right? Yeah, well, I took a little break. I did 40 episodes in 40 weeks. Damn. And I was a little burnt out. Uh, and sure. also, I had a two-month-old when I decided to stop doing it. Right. It was just, I just didn't have the time to do it. Um, and I'll pick it back up after the season. Um, I'm already, you know, thinking of things to do and okay. and guests to have on. So it'll be fun. All right. Well, I'm, I'll, I'll give you one of these mugs. Thank you. I'll be more than happy to appear on your pod I if you want to have a to Michigan have Duke debate. I would love to have you on. I'd love yeah, it'd be great. <laughs> Where we can out arrogant the other. <laughs> 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 and good luck, uh, good luck to your blue. Can devils. I also just say one thing for Please. any listener? Like, yeah. I I have a little bit of a dry humor, so all this like Duke stuff that I was spouting, like it was all you in meant good every fun. word. No, it was all in good fun. It was all in good fun. I think you came off pretty good. Rich came off as the Duke hater here in this situation, JJ. I think you're fine. Yeah. All right. Well, it's, it's deep. It goes back to the Fab Five. I mean, it, it runs deep. It runs deep. But when we, when we have Coach K on the show, it's he, he you know, get the legend. It's it's a great talk great. for him. It and is. you had Jay Billis on before him today. Yeah, you know, Jay went, Billis. And Ken, Ken Jong was yesterday. here yesterday. Bunch of Dukies. Yeah, Ken Jong was putting on a face paint while well, Allah Abdel Nabi was roaming the uh, campus. Yeah, just so many Duke references right now. It's nonstop. I just need Allah a, Abdel Nabi. I know. I, I kind of need a, a shower. One. It's a great one. All <laughs> right, let's take a break. G good to see you, JJ Thank Reddick. You. Thanks again. And everybody should once again go to the website of dovemencare.com slash NCAA and sign the Real Strength Manifesto to show off your passion and fandom of, uh, of your team. Uh, come back anytime. I really sure. mean that. That's JJ Reddick right here on the Thanks Rich Eisen Show. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.